Hi, for this tutorial we're going to take a look at the general settings in WordPress and to get to those we're going to be on the dashboard page and we're going to go down to settings and this is just going to have the general settings for our site. So this will be things like the WordPress Tutorial Hub, which is my site title, also a tagline, and as it says, you just want to use a few words about what your site is about, nothing too long, but something that gives an accurate idea. The WordPress URL, the site address URL. Now, if you're going to be using an address for the site page that's different from the directory that you installed your WordPress in, you're going to want to go ahead and put the address that is correct in the site address. Next, it's the email address that you're using. The membership, you can choose whether anyone can register or not. Their new user default role, which will decide if they can be a subscriber, administrator, editor, author, or contributor. And keep in mind this is very important because if you just want somebody to be able to come read your site and respond, you'll just want to have them as a subscriber. Your time zone. The date format that you want to appear on your site. And you can see we've got an American format as well as the European format, or you can do a custom format, the time format that you would like it to show, and what day your week starts on. Once you get all that information, you can just go ahead and click on Save Changes. Let's take a look at some of the other settings in here. The first one we're going to look at is the writing setting. The writing settings has different standards for what will be actually posted. For instance, the size of your post box is 20 lines. You can either change this so it's smaller or larger. You can also choose whether to convert emoticons such as smiley faces to graphics on the display. And you can choose whether you want WordPress to correctly and validly nest XHTML automatically. The default post category can be uncategorized. Or if you know, for instance, that everything you write is going to be about WordPress, you can go ahead and click WordPress. Or if it's going to be about pictures, you can click on pictures. This is going to be your default, but you can always go in and change them later. The default link category you can choose as blog roll. And then there's the press this that will allow you to go and grab little pieces off the internet to put on your own site. If you want to post your WordPress by email, you can set up a secret email account using POP3 Access. So any email that's received at that address will be posted, so you'll want to keep the address secret because you don't want spammers, say, sending something from this email address and then have it automatically pop up. These are three random strings that you can use that are recommended. It asks for your mail server, the port that you use, your login name, your password, and then if you want to set a default mail category. Next we have remote publishing and this is to post on WordPress from a desktop blogging client or a remote site website that uses the Atom Publishing Protocol or the XML RPC publishing interfaces. If so, you can check either of these boxes that apply. At the bottom, when you publish a new post, WordPress is going to, to notify updating services. If you want to learn more about it, you can click right here on Updating Services, and then you can separate multiple service URLs by just clicking Enter after you add each one. And at the bottom, you're going to click on Save Changes. So let's take a look at Reading. This is where you choose whether your front page is going to display the latest thing that you wrote or a static page. If you choose a static page, it's going to allow you to choose which static page they're going to see and a post page. You can choose how many blog pages are going to be showing, so you can choose 10 posts or you can go higher or lower, and show the syndication feed, which shows the most recent, which could be 10 items or higher or lower. If you want to show the full text of each article in your feed, you can click that, or just a quick summary. And then you'll want to leave the UTF-8 pretty much the same, unless there are other encodings that you're sure you can use successfully. And again, hit Save Changes. Now let's look at the discussion. The discussion settings are basically how you decide how people can interact with your blog. This is going to be where you attempt to notify any blogs that are linked to or from your article. If you're going to allow link notifications such as pingbacks and trackbacks from other blogs. Whether you're going to allow people to post comments on new articles. Also, comment settings such as whether the author 
of the comment has to fill out a name and email address and that's a good idea if you want to keep spammers off of your site. You can also choose whether they have to be registered and logged into comment, which I'm going to choose. You can automatically close comments on articles that are older than 14 days. You can enable nested comments up to five levels deep, meaning someone can make a response, someone can respond directly to them, and so on down to five levels deep. You can break comments into pages with how many top level comments you want on a page and if you want those as first or last by default. Next, the comments should be displayed with the older comments or the newer comments on the page. You can be emailed if someone posts for a comment or if a comment is being held for you to moderate it before it's posted. You can also choose what happens before the comment appears. If an administrator has to always approve the comment, you can click here. And if the comment author must have a previously approved comment to post, you can click there. If the comment holds two or more links, which is very common in spam, you can also make that decision here. You can match words in the content that will have to be in a moderation queue. And then down here, you can mark them automatically as spam. At the bottom you can choose whether to display avatars or not, what the worst rating could be for your site and its contents, and if they get a default avatar it will automatically generate the four on the bottom or they'll just have these three on the top and click Save Changes. Next is Media. This decides how large say your images are going to be when you bring them in. It shows the size of your thumbnails, it allows you to choose whether those thumbnails will be automatically cropped, what the medium size largest dimensions would be, what the largest size largest dimensions would be, whether they can embed media content from a URL directly into the page, such as from Flickr or YouTube, the maximum embed size, and as you can see, if the width value is blank, it will automatically embed it to the maximum width of your theme, whether you can store uploads in a folder, whether you're going to have a full URL path to files, and whether you want to organize your uploads into month and year based folders. And once you choose all of those, just click on Save to Changes. Next is Privacy, and this one's simple. You may want to keep the search engines from finding your site until it's built up to where you want it to be. If so, you're going to want to click on Ask Search Engines not to index this site. If it's ready to go and you're ready for people to see it, just leave it on Allow Search Engines to index the site and go ahead and click on Save Changes. Finally, we've got the permalinks. The permalinks are a custom URL structure that is used for your permalinks and archives. This helps it look better, makes it more usable, and makes sure that your links will be compatible in the future. You can see here the permalinks. On the top is the default, which is your web address, the folder where your web address is, and the name of your page. You can also do it by day and name, by month and name, numeric, post name, or you can make up a custom structure of your own. You can also choose a category base or a tag base if you'd like, and then click on Save Changes. So that's a basic overview of the settings of your WordPress site, and you can get a lot done and make sure that it is arranged the way you want it to be just by going in and making sure that these settings are correct. If you have something that you're not quite sure about, as always, you can always look it up on Google or you can ask the WordPress people. So thanks for listening to this tutorial. I hope it helped you out, and I'll see you at the next one.